Yeah, and in this matchup, like I, I gotta say, coming into looking at face value, we talked a little bit about this. That the French would seem like the apparent and obvious choice, and the reason is that although in the late game the French fall off and the English really thrive due to a lack of gold and an excess on the other side, it's how open Basin is that makes it difficult for English players. Indeed, spawning on the south side in the color red is B playing as the English to the north. B security is going to be in command of the French with the color blue. Mm, that doesn't just feel right, Lytical. It's almost like we forced them to do this. If you're English, you must play red. If you're French, you must play blue. If you break the rules, we break your legs. I mean, uh, we, we find you. So you are telling me it's not fun to watch games where we have purple players against pink players? No, I want more of that. <laughs> I know how much that annoyed you. I actually want more of that. <laughs> I'm an agent of chaos, Lydical. If you give me <laughs> anarchy, I will take it. Why do you think I'm such a big B and Mr. fan? Ah, <laughs> uh, well, if you're a B fan, you sure are happy because B is so far having a spectacular run in these weeklies. Not just this one, but it's all the weeklies that we're looking at. He is second only to Beastie when it comes to weekly points. Has had one of the most consistent top performances in the EGC Road to Red Bull Volo weekly events. It's incredibly impressive when you consider how he performed in Golden League, right? He wasn't one of the Golden Eight. So for him to evolve like this, for him to take that big step up, you know, some people would argue that maybe other players have been underperforming their eyes. You, know, you think of the Spanish bros who maybe didn't qualify as quickly as people expected or haven't dominated as much as we're used to seeing them but i think this is more to the credit of the layer below upping their game whether you're talking about your whams and puppy balls of course were in that funnel eight or people like b that have been waiting in the woodworks to strike and keep in mind that b just barely missed being in that golden eight he was ninth yeah. place in golden league with 65 points puppy Po actually jumped ahead of him puppy Po was the kind of guy that just came out of nowhere during golden league and shocked everybody with a top eight performance but that also meant that a lot of people forget about B, who barely made it, actually, he almost made it, rather, to the top eight, was very close. Oh, imagine that he makes it in there, we would be talking about him as like a top eight player entering Road to Red Bull Vol and even upping that. But as you pointed out, mm -hmm. it's not the fact that the players at the top have fallen off, it's the fact that the players below are just upping their game quite rapidly. I think something that always got discounted is the consistency he had to be just outside of that top echelon. Right, and the persistence it takes when you come that close, you can taste it and you fail time and time again. Like that is what makes a true great player in the future. Someone that can overcome that. And what I'm talking about is the fact that not just Golden League did he end up ninth. He technically got ninth place in N4C as well. Remember, he took Mister to seven games to qualify and Mister was able to just about take that series against him. This guy has been on the cusp of greatness time and time again. And of course is already qualified for Heidelberg, but you know, what I'm seeing out of him here, like this is the best B I've seen so far. This is the guy that I could actually genuinely say with a straight face, no memes, nothing inside, like top six finish at Wallah. I agree. In fact, right now, especially given the fact that we still have some time ahead of Wallah, you could make an argument that B's goal to win is to win the event. Not to be top four, not to be top eight. I feel like he knows fully well that he's got the skills to possibly be a contender for the championship there. Yeah, and I think the, the point to make here is like, no player comes in saying, I can't win it, right? You, like, you know, you have kind of this reserved element of like, I don't know if I'm the best right now, but like, I can be the best. But I think like B is reaching a point where he could like plant his flag and say, yeah, I'm, I'm the best. Right? Yeah, I the thing is, do it, it, it's a matter of, you know, believing in yourself and being realistic. Like some players, I can tell you some players, especially who are like, kind of out of that top 16, they're, they would be more than happy if they just make it there or they would say, okay, I would be happy with a top eight finish. Obviously, I hope for more, but I would be happy with a top eight. For B, I really feel like with what he's showing to us in the last couple of months, for him, he would only be happy with the first place. Yeah, and I, I think he's right to feel that way. Like, he's definitely at the, the front of the pack right now. Like, to him, uh, to me, rather, the standouts, like, in the road to all low, the people, like, if I had to rank the top people, I'd, oh, man, I'm not going to put them in order because I think that gets a little bit muddly but like if i top four in my mind right now is beastie b uh puppy paw mm, now marine lord seems like the obvious one to shoe in there which actually <laughs> I, I gotta give him credit like that's impressive that i still say marine lord considering 
he probably practices the least out of all four of those players. Coincidentally, these four players have the top four weekly points, and I can agree wow. with your sentiment here. <laughs> A lot of players could also be challengers for a title. We have seen a lot of upsets or surprises, yes. and there is still a lot of time until the event. But yeah, right now, you get the feel that these guys are the four front runners of the scene, and everybody else, they're going to have to work quite a lot to be able to get the championship, because these guys, their goal is the crown at Heidelberg. Mm -hmm. And what I love is, you know, we can talk about the online and who dominates there, but, you know, you look at any esports, anyone who's followed esports for years knows there's a difference between performing online and on LAN. Some people try to discredit that in a game like Age of Empires 4. It's like, well, the, the ping's not a problem. It's not like you're playing CSGO. No, there's there's a pressure. There's a feeling. There, there's also just like this, this kind of underdog factor that can work in your favor. Also, when people are taking less of a look at you seriously, it can put you ahead. So like, you know, it, it's very difficult for players like B and Beastie that are going to have this pressure we're putting on them coming in to necessarily perform just because more eyes are on them because of these feelings. Exactly, and it's a big thing. The fact that you are on the stage makes it a much more difficult thing than ju to just play from your living room. A good example is that one of the AoE2 players, Dogao, he plays in a completely dark room no matter what time of day he plays in. He can't do that. Like, he wouldn't be able to do that on a stage like this. And you have Hold these... On. So, so just, I want to, like, highlight in that. So you're saying the solution, solution to being Dogao is, like, you just turn your torch on your phone and flash him in the middle of a series, right? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's but... what I took away from that. <laughs> you, you get the point. The idea is that yeah. each player has that little comfort the of his own home. Different. Yeah, exactly. And trust me, I can tell you this as well. When you're on cams, you have massive lights shining in your eyes. It's like It actually is pretty tiring to look into those or even just have that on your peripheral side. So, God, it sounds so deeperish yep. when you put it like, it's really tiring to be this successful and everyone just like wants your photo and everything. <laughs> I mean, there, there's a reason why people say it's difficult to be in the spotlight, right? I mean, that, that, that depends why you're in the spotlight. Like, if you're trying to escape from a prison, yes, it's very difficult to be in the spotlight. <laughs> oh, anyway. Speaking of prison, though, <laughs> B is setting a bit of a prison for himself up over here, although the living standards inside this prison are rather splendid for the time being. A lot of space for him to work with with the farms, already on a second town in reverse. On the other side, what do we have for Beastie? An expansion to the left, second DC rather far away from the initial base. Yeah, like if, if this is a prison that B's gonna create here, if he's gonna complete the wall, what this is actually gonna turn into is it's like one of those um, investment fraud prisons, you know, the fancy <laughs> ones that people go to. Cause like, look how far B would have to wall on the south side to actually contain himself and prevent any raids in. It's so big. Yeah, it's, it's, it's rather difficult to wall yourself off. Then again, against the French, if you can wall your base off, it's going to be worth the investment because keep in mind what happened in the previous game on Dry Arabia. B got torn to shreds by all those small groups of units that Beast just kept microing into his eco. And I really feel like, especially learning from the previous game, B needs to respect Beast's ability to be there at like four different places raiding his eco. And despite the fact that the investment for those walls would be big, it's still worth it probably for him. I can't help but chuckle whenever I see that. Nice TC that cannot see anything. Like, genuinely, get some glasses, whoever's standing in that watchtower. Because you just saw the vision B got. He revealed every piece of info, and BC didn't even necessarily know he was there. Ah, oh, man, I love Stealth Forest. <laughs> <laughs> just look at yeah. it. It's, 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 the crazy part is, I remember in the early days of AoE 4, the highest level players didn't actually clock this at first. Though you don't realize it. I, I remember B dropping TCs right next to Stealth Forest and then being surprised when he got jump. Yeah, it's, it's not obvious, right? Because you will think it's a big building. It's something that provides a lot of line of sight, especially because your starting TC has pretty massive line of sight. You will think that your expansion TCs do as well. And well, truth be told, they do. It's just the fact they don't have line of sight into the stealth forests. Yeah, key detail there. And uh, I think it's very important in a map like Basin. Especially considering how vast these stealth forests are. In fact, I say that these are the... This is, in terms of like stealth forest saturation on the map, probably the second highest in rotation. The only one being it being high view. I mean, it's difficult to get more stealth forests than high view. Let's just say that. Someone just go make a map called Stealth Forest now. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, that would be like a horror show version of AoE4. Like you just never know when you're going to be attacked. And you wouldn't be allowed to make scouts. Imagine that. <laughs> Speaking of attacking, look what Beastie's doing. 
he wants a little piggy to play with. And B, well, he did play onto those deers, which I love. Actually, we, we didn't talk about that yet. Like, he's getting an incredibly quick castle timing. The reason why B gets this is because he went on deer. If you look at his yep. base, there's a lack of farms. That's what allowed him to boost up this quickly. And Beast has no idea he's going into castle. He might get a glimpse of that based on the stables, but he's just missing out on the King's Pass being built. The two scouts don't cover that area. As you see, based on the landmarks, he wouldn't know. He only knows it based oh. on the stables. There it is. Tech out complete. Species like, wait, what? I only have two knights. Can you can you pause? Can you not build anything for two minutes? Nope, that's not how this works. B, we said he needed Castle Age to feel comfortable in this matchup, and he gets it pretty quickly. Beastie is chasing, though. He's going for a tech up as well. Yeah, he's going to attack up. Question is whether he goes for Royal Institute. You get the feel that you kind of need it here because it's going to be all about the Night Wars. And indeed, Royal Institute is the landmark of choice here for Beastie. He doesn't want a long-term situation, right? We don't want to be talking about Imperial down the line. BC understands he wants the one-up in Castle Age. Just getting there with your heavy cavalry, if B goes for it as well, gives you that advantage. But Rule Institute... Whew, I mean, that's like, you know, to be honest, like, that should be illegal at this point, all right? <laughs> like, Rule Bloodlines, Canted Saddles, the amount of extra effective HP as well as damage that BC's going to have at his disposal in these fights feels criminal. Not just that, but think about what B is making right now. Knights, and you have the perfect response to those. The Arboletrier, not just simple Arboletrier, ones with the Gambus Zones and the Crossbow Stirrups upgrade as well. As you said, that landmark carries so much power for the French, really unlocks their military potential here in Castle Age. B right now is just all in on those Knights. Surprised he's not just continuing to fluff up his Spearman count. I feel like Spearman is always a safe way to go with the English. Even if you start to get counted in the main fight, the cool thing about a map like Basin is you could take those 30 Spearmen, walk them to the flank, and then torch down that secondary TC. Yeah, that's a good point. And keep in mind that the French, they want to be keeping knights on the field, maybe some Arboletrier, but as long as they don't have a lot of Arboletrier, they won't be able to deal really well with large amounts of Spearmen. And you don't want to deviate into men at arms or archers. So having a couple of spearmen on the field forces the French to do some of those things. And it's just a delight to the French. I love the fact that BC is going in for spears, even though he could just win on knights alone. Because he, he isn't at that point yet, right? Like he yep. hasn't got raw bloodlines, he hasn't got canted saddles. So he has to respect the threat that B will have initially because his economy is bigger. And that's a big thing indeed. And it also forces B to start adding some extra units. Longbows those will be, but... Still, that's going to delay B, and as you said, it is precious time that Beastie is buying to himself with this, allowing him to work his way towards Cantal Settles and Royal Bloodlines. Has to be careful not to buy too much time though, right? Like the English, if they get an opportunity, if they see a chance to go for Imperial, they'll rip your hand off and take it. That's where this sieve really starts to unlock his potency. Yeah, also do keep in mind, as we go deeper in this game, farms will come online, and those farms, those will also give a massive boost of efficiency for the English over the French, and I think we are entering that domain where those farms will become relevant, and the third TC, that being the King's Palace, also starting to churn out some advantage here for AB. Whoopsie. BC. Oop. We'll react. Lose one village in the process. Looks like the monks have been spotted out, so B's greed is going to be punished. And Royal Bloodlines is now being primed quite early out of BC, actually. Only five knights in the field so far. And some of them might not even live to see the next day because he's diving into dangerous territory here. Network of castles could easily even things out. I'm actually unsure whether one-on-one, -on -one, a knight boosted by Network of Castles or the knight boosted by Royal Bloodlines wins. I would think Royal Bloodlines, but it's not as clear-cut as it would be in other matchups for the French. So, Network of Citadels and no charge coming out, like, I would actually give it to an English Knight. Because the charge is the important detail, right? Like, you have an effective HP increase, but if you don't charge, you don't get the bonus damage on your French Knight, but you also yep. don't get the Canted Saddle extra damage either. But is it Network of Citadels or Network of Castles? Because Citadels is a different story. For that, B yeah. needs to make a keep first. I think Citadels definitely, like, Castles is a bit tighter, but it's still more close than it has any right being. Um, but yeah, I, I, I am expecting B to go into that, that stone soon. Like, a Ford Keep would be great here, just because if you check his vision, he has no vision into that Stealth Forest on the east side. Yeah, that's alarming. He's playing with limited vision over here. And keep in mind, his base is still somewhat open. An opportunity for Beast to trickle in a couple of knights into his eco at some point. Oh. No. Nope. Hmm. 
no. <laughs> now you die as well. Congratulations on yelling too loudly and getting the bear in the woods to come. He's gonna make a run for it. <laughs> He's like, nope, no, you can have it now. It's on cooldown. No more wallows coming out. Middle fingers him and walks away. But he will still die. Spearman. Oh, that <laughs> range is so disgusting. Big win for Beastie out there, and he's also starting to win in the middle. Look at that, gold miners exposed. Beastie may have found a weak spot here in B's base because B seems to be desperate for gold. Uh huh. And all Beastie's gonna do is keep amassing spears. Now up to 16, more knights to come as well. Remember that that TC on the front side, it's pretty limited on health. 2400 easily sniped down. It's not like your primaries that have a chunky HP pool. I'm wondering actually what B's plan is. Like he's pushing more knights. He's also getting military academies, which I like, but you need it because if you don't have military academy, you're behind French knight production because they already have an increased rate. But what comes after that? Because th there's no way that B just wants to float castle long term. Yeah, I, I think he's trying to drag the game out, but that might be overly ambitious because Beastie has no desire to play a long game here. Diving into the knights, getting ready for the keep drop. And if there's anyone in the world of a 4 <laughs> that knows a lot, one or two tricks at least, about dragging games out is Beastie. And I think he knows when he's being had, which is why he's starting to mount that pressure. Indeed. In fact, it looks like the first keep is going to be placed in the middle, but that's just the staging ground. And you see he's placing it right next to the stone mine. That is telling you what's coming next. There is going to be a second keep, a third one, and a slow creep towards the base of B will soon begin. And the other thing that this keeps give you, of course, being the French, is uh, discounts. Just build your infrastructure on the front line, and due to the French influence, pay less for those knights that you want so badly. It's actually so advantageous to the French, especially considering B is not building any siege to address it. Uh, B, on the other hand, he's at least making some longbows to deal with the spearmen. The concern for him right now is that he kind of needs to make longbows. And Beast is fine with that, because he's fine losing the Spearman. What he wants is his opponent to commit a lot of longbows, so he can win with those knights that you mentioned before. That attack speed buffer, like the AoE, the fact the tower's triggering it, I love that detail. B tries to just continue the trade out. Trebs are now coming out for Beastie. This is going to be to deal with the TC, but he's going to get added benefit from this. Look what B has been doing. He's been gathering stones, so he is finally getting a keep ready on the English side. He needs that keep to what protect that gold you? mine. <laughs> I just love it when you think there's a relic and then you just end up stuck there being mauled by wolves. Fun times, fun times. Beastie with the push now. He's got trebuchets too to back this up with. This keep is actually more dangerous than it looks like. Tax people. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Beastie, he realizes quickly what's happened there. I think he was, I thought he was looking away. The reason I was worried about that, you notice what happened, right? He chased too long. The lances went down. That's the detail I'm looking for because that's going to be the hype moment in these night clashes. That's where B can easily clean up. Yeah, and with the castle coming up, Network of Citadel soon becomes a reality. And as you said, that could be the big momentum swing in these night battles. Numbers are even. It's the quality that matters and the ability or the inability to get that charge in, especially for the French. Just one slip up right now could be critical either way. You can see the night counts are neck and neck. However, B is starting to take the lead, courtesy of the military academy that Beastie maybe wasn't expecting. And it looks like some knights will actually flank around here, trying to snipe the trebuchet. Bang him in again. Like, he basically realizes he's never going to get a fight in this situation unless he's not charging. And that attack speed buffer that is going to get better considering Network of Citadels are now being researched is going to make it even more difficult for BC to fight. And look at what B is doing. Eight monks on the field. He's trying oh, to play Lordy. Delhi cosplay. <laughs> he's like, you banned my Delhi? Huh? You think that's funny? It's okay, I'll just play Delhi here. Uh. And now, what the trebuchet? <gasps> Beastie, he went left. But he should have went right. He would have been right. There's nothing over on the left side. It's already walled in. Oh my goodness, such a level of damage oh. being done here. Siege weapons taken down, spearmen taken down. And now, the knights can still fight. There's no attack speed buffer though. The healing's going to be there, but no attack speed buffer. Remember, Beastie, although he lost the trebuchet, he got rid of the outpost, got rid of the TC. He's got rid of the ringing of the town bell that gives the English the edge. However... The spearmen coming through and the monks is making the difference. And you can see Beastie's now trying to mirror it, <laughs> but he's too late to the trick. It's four versus ten monks. And the longbows. 
that many longbows can one-shot those monks, makes it much more difficult for B to replicate what his opponent is doing. And there is the next tower coming up for B, momentum heavily on his side now. Holy smokes. And Beastie doesn't have any answer to sniping from long range. These Springles don't really do enough damage to quickly get rid of the monks. They could probably heal between the salvos coming in towards them. Beastie hasn't really got that sort of time. He needs pressure. He needs it fast. He's prepping the mangonels, but one of them alone, I still think, is not going to be good enough to deal with the monks. Sure, you can deal with the longbows, but that means the monks and knights what go on it. What? Beastie? He went for the trebuchet. And he didn't even get it. And he's gonna oh. lose the trebuchet as well! Disaster for Beastie. He's also fighting into the aura. Look at the monks. I don't know, I don't... Okay, just to clarify for people, the heal rate doesn't get increased by the network of Citadels. <laughs> they're just glowing because they're feeling good. Because they're rejuvenated. Because despite any damage Beastie attempts, B offsets it straight away, courtesy of the English NHS. What a combo here. He's up to 14 monks, non-stop healing those knights. A network of Citadel's bonus boosting this army. It's a powerful army by itself, but it's also almost indestructible with that many monks around. Oh, B. Numbers are quickly spiral out of control. The concern for Beastie is if he can't start to short this army, if he can't exchange well, that means Imperial Age comes into the picture for the English. And the English are looking dominant here. Unexpectedly so in Castle Age. Trebuchet is sieging into the keep. Once that falls, it's going to be a flood through. And Beastie lacks the army, lacks the leg to stand on against this. B about to take full control of the game. B has no desire to go into Imperial here, KP. He just wants to finish his opponent off right in this moment as the Manganol spawns gets immediately picked off by the infantry. And with the castle down, it's a free flood into the base of Beastie. Nice mango hit. Let me just get a little bit of NHS on that problem. NHS! <laughs> NHS! Beastie can just hear it echoing in his ears. And his food is now depleted at the worst possible time. What a way for this game to swing fully in favor of B. 68 army against just 14 beasts. He's struggling big time to keep his numbers up and he just doesn't seem to have the chance to stop this. It's a non-stop flood. Very reminiscent to what you would see from the Delhi this time around with the English for Beast. He's also gonna take down the monasteries. All the relics will be gone for Beast too. Such an innovative approach. How many times you see the English leverage the healing like this? You just don't see it the last time that I saw someone using English healing well, it was Abbey of Kings. You just never see the monks utilized by a Civ like this. So impressive out of B. Now up to 15 monks and snowballing out of control. Beastie has not waved that white flag yet, but you're beginning to question why. It looks like he is out of this game. And with that many monks on the field, B can just yoink the relics. He's already taking one, he's gonna take the other three. <laughs> just take these and return them. No, you don't need them anymore. Yep. It's not like you're going to be in this game much longer anyway, Beastie. I think this is the moment where Beastie just buys a little bit of extra time to think about what he wants to do next game. Because once these mangoes go down, like there's no hope to recovering. I mean, <laughs> okay, just stop an attack click. Just attack click right now with the monks and they're good to go. <laughs> what, is he just doing a victory lap? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he's just distracting for the keep, I guess. That is an ambitious and aggressive keep right next to two landmarks, but Beast has no tools of stopping that. He just doesn't care about the mangoes. He's <laughs> like, okay, this is fine. I'll, I'll just heal the damage off. You haven't got enough mangoes yet. I think he's just going to bait BC to build too many mangoes, and yeah, then rush in. It's five mangoes in the field and no front line that's effective to defend it. Oh man, such a great game here by B. And now he's thinking about the Imperial Age as well. Beast is five steps behind compared to his opponent and you really struggle to see his win condition at this point. And I think once the mangoes go down, he'll admit defeat. Like, look at his food. He can't actually get an army out. Also, because he keeps using all this wood to build in the siege with the Triple Siege Workshop, he can't sustain more farms. He can't build up his line of eco. And with the outpost crawling in, B, also now imping up, I would expect a GG the moment Imperial completes. This <laughs> one looks done. B even takes all three sacred sites to force the pressure on the BC to force him to come out. And one of those sacred sites are actually inside of the base of B security. That just tells you how dominant Ooh. B's position is. 
Lytical, is it in the base of Beastie Cutie or in the base of uh, base of B? Because this is looking a lot like B's base now. <laughs> NHS. 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 There it goes. B takes the game. What a showcase here. And when I saw him picking the English, I had a crazy thought go through my mind. I was like, wait a minute. He loves his Delhi, he can't use them. He loves his Tower of Victory with the attack boost. English is possibly as close as you can get to that with the network of castles. I wonder if that's gonna be part of his plan. I did not expect him to cosplay Delhi this much too, I'm not gonna lie. Using so many monks on the battlefield to heal. Such an innovative way to play the English and playing a very full castle age, full aggro castle age that is, against the French. Not something that you see every day from the English. Stellar game once again from B to take the lead with. Yeah, I just love the way that he went for the Relic Race. He's like, the Relic Race isn't working. Well, I, I built this monastery. I push monks a lot quicker these days. Maybe there's a use for this? And it makes sense when you think about like, yeah, he's got these knights that he has to invest gold into. But once he gets past that panic point where the gold isn't accessible, you saw that he kind of let off of gold usage there and started to invest into a lot of spears and, and longbows. I think that was a great read by him. What an out-of-the-box approach to the English. I think that's the, the first time I've seen that type of build look effective. I've seen a few players attempt it, but never to that much success. And as a result, B, taking the lead in a series that maybe people had some question marks on with the way it opened. Beastie now finding himself under pressure with B on 